Well, welcome back, as promised. Again, another basic uh, video on what to expect in fermentation. So, um, for all of you out there who are really experienced at it, I mean, sit back and just enjoy this. But for those interested in getting into the hobby, here's a really good tutorial on what to expect during fermentation. So, please comment below, subscribe, share us with your friends, and you can always email me or give me a call. All right, uh, what I've done now is I've got the airlock. Remember, we talked about the airlock. And uh, the airlock, I've got, I actually poured coffee into it so you can see it better. And you can see it's just level across there, which means that there's a line here. There's a, there's a, a, a block. So air cannot get back in. But if we pressurize, which the yeast, when they start eating, they produce CO2 as a byproduct and that has to escape somehow. Remember, it wants to leave. It, it's just like opening up a Coke and setting it there. That CO2 wants to get out of there. It doesn't want to be there in the first place. Uh, so that'll just make its way up through our airlock. It'll bubble out, and then every time it stops or the, the pressure balances, uh, the liquid will drop back in and create a lock. So that way it's airlock. Uh, it'll prevent oxygen from going back in. Now, you always want to make sure that you prevent oxygen from getting inside your fermentation because oxygen's your worst enemy during fermentation. That's why. Okay, now this is what it should look like when it's actually fermenting. And I would consider this a pretty robust fermentation. Uh, so you, you know, you've got all that CO2 that's popping out and you'll notice that one side is full and the other side now is empty. That pressure of that CO2 being released and escaping is going out. Now, this is what it'll probably look like when it starts to slow down. And you may get a bubble every once in a while. See, I can, you may get a bubble every once in a while. What that indicates is, and this will happen, it can happen on day three, it can happen on day five, it can happen on day 10. Um, Again, that's all relative to how much fermentable sugars you have in here. So don't get wrapped up. We always say seven to 10 days for an average. Um, but that's what will happen just about the time that it quits fermenting. And you see you've got positive pressure. And every once in a while, again, CO2 wants to leave. You may get a bubble every minute or two or whatever the case may be. But what will also happen is that when you, you know it's absolutely done, when you notice it balances back out, that means there's no pressure in here, no positive pressure anyway, and no negative pressure. Uh, it just balances out and there's no activity inside your fermenter. So that's an indicator that it's done. Now here's what often, often happens. Uh, you'll put your airlock on there and you'll go through and do all this stuff and I'll get a call call me. I don't mind. And they'll say, I've done all of this and they'll explain everything they did and they did everything absolutely right. But I don't see any bubbles. Well, CO2 is just like electricity. It'll take the path of least resistance. So if you've got a leak around your bucket anywhere, just a small leak, that CO2 is going to want to escape. Let me see if I can demonstrate that. That CO2 will want to escape. It will not make its way into your airlock. It will escape out of a leak. So you see there? Now I've got a leak. So check your bucket lid. Now another thing you can do, of course, there's another way to check to make sure fermentation is happening. And that is, if you know what your original gravity was and it sits like this for a couple of days, drop your hydrometer in there. And if it floats lower than it did when you started, it's been fermenting. It's just you've got a leak somewhere. That's all there is to it, okay? So that's a way to test it, to know what's going on and also to know what the problem could potentially be. Now, what are the benefits of using a carboy when you're doing this? If you have a carboy, you know, the big glass jug, you can look in the side of it and you can actually see all this activity taking place. And you'll see this 
churning of yeast and sugars and it, it's just it's a really impressive thing to watch so that's one way of telling if it's actually fermenting if you're using a carboy or if you're using a bucket of course you can't see through it so you've got to use your data points on your hydrometer there that's why whenever i get a call about a mash of wine or a beer my first question is almost always what was your original gravity because that data point tells us everything about the health and the progress of your fermentation. So hang in there and uh, we'll get ready to do another film. Happy distilling, brewing, or whatever your pleasures may be.